This is his ice sled. This little guy is You're going to be a delay. Yeah, it has a delay. Also. So, Matt, why don't you jump in well, and I talk? Got it announced. Oh. This works. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Thank you. No, you have to. You, you have to because there's a delay. Hey, John, would you mind talking a little? It's going to be a, a minute before you but, but let me give you some headphones. Uh, welcome, everyone. Testing, testing. Who you have here is John Cherevka of Legacy Effects, formerly of Stan Winston Studio, a master painter, master sculptor. He's here with us at Monster Palooza, Son of Palooza. It's October, after all, and mm -hmm. he's agreed to paint for us mm -hmm. uh, a head that, that Jamie Grove had recently told the world he wanted to paint. Mm -hmm. So there may be fisticuffs. <laughs> John, the people are yours. Welcome. Can't wait. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is a a, a stone uh, zombie bust uh, that I sculpted years back, uh, probably twelve or more years ago. Um, this is uh, Ultra Cal, uh, the casting, uh, and I started with house paint, just right out of, it was like an old leftover kitchen color, like a semi-gloss, um, and that's kind of like what you see here. And then what I also did was take some dark red, and I airbrushed and started blocking out some of the uh, wound areas, just to give a visual. Uh, and I also took a little raw umber oil paint and did a, a wash like in these cracks um, so right now I just have a uh, like a off-white and I'm just blocking in some highlight tones on bones and uh, teeth just make some color separation uh, and then I can later come back and start blending and breaking uh, all that up One, two, one, two, testing, one, two. Yes. Yeah, great. Welcome back. Hello, hello, now thank I you. I can hear you. Oh, oh your, nice. your uh, airbrush needs to be plugged in. Where do I find that screenshot? Oh. So I'm just continuing with some highlights right now, just blocking in uh, at this point. Just trying to get some separation going. I'm just using washes of acrylic, uh, very translucent, just so it doesn't get too cakey or thick. I'm almost ready to move to a, a stronger highlight, and then I'm going to start to beat uh, the color down a bit with other darker colors. This is more of an ivory, so this will be the highlight to that yellowy color I, I put on as a block out. I'm just looking for some contrast at this point. I'm 
bring some on the teeth, start to sharpen them up a little bit. Later on, we're going to dirty them up, put some dried blood and whatnot in there. But. So I'm just shaping for the most part. I'm, I'm looking at the, the part I'm about to paint. I decide where the high spot is. I also th think about the shape of the bone or whatever it may be to play that up a little bit while I paint it. Yeah, li light seems good to me. If you need, we have a keynote over your head later. Okay. I think now, now that I've got um, two levels of highlight established, I'm going to go the opposite way and do two levels of darkness. So I'm going to do uh, probably those in two colors. I think I'm going to start with a um, maybe a red brown. And then uh, maybe go a black brown after that. just announced this broadcast. We are live at Son of Monster Palooza. I am Matt Winston, co-founder of Stanwyston School. This is John Cherevka, uh, uh, FX hi, master, all. one of the best in the business, and he's with us for the next two hours. Uh, he's here to uh, talk to you guys about art and about monster making and about this beautiful zombie bust of his that he's, that he's working on. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the bust and the techniques you're going to be showing? Yeah, uh, the bust is a, uh, a ultra-cal bust. Um, it's a, it was sculpted in clay. I did a silicone mold from it. Um, this was cast in stone out of the mold. Uh, I did a house paint uh, treatment on it to start just because it's inexpensive paint and it's easy to get a nice good skin color. Um, and then from there I did a, a, some red uh, airbrushing and a little bit of brown uh, oil wash. Now I started to go back in and uh, bring out some highlights with two colors. I have like a g more of a yellowed uh, bone color to start, and then I went on top of that with a, like a, more of an ivory color. Now I'm going to actually go two degrees darker, so I'm going to like, but with color. So I'm, I have like a red brown that I'm um, getting together, and I'm going to start doing washes and start to accent the shapes a little bit and uh, pull out the sculpture at this point. Um, yeah, this is all acrylics. Uh, there's only been one oil paint uh, thing on there so far, and uh, the rest, I believe, is just going to be acrylics. Cool. Well, uh, as I said before, this man is one of the very best in Hollywood. He had a long tenure at Stan Winston Studio. He's been at Legacy Effects for the last five years and worked at many other shops around town, and they don't get any better than John Cherevka, so sit back and learn something. Uh, we invite your comments. Uh, you'll see a comments uh, field right next to the video there. Uh, any questions you have for John, uh, ask him, and we will ask John, and he'll, uh, he'll respond. So enjoy. Welcome to Sun Monster Palooza. All right, so yeah, I'm, I'm working on that uh, dark brown reddish color. It's uh, it started off with brown. I put a little red. It's not dark enough, so I'm gonna add a little more dark red to it. It's actually the color that I missed it up here, um, but I'm gonna add some water to it. So I don't I don't want it as like just like strong paint. I make a little washes, and this will be a like a shaping color. Then I'm gonna go in and start to accent these wounds and. Um, Let's see if this works. Yeah, here we go. 
It's a little more of a brown leathery red and then I'll go darker than this one later as well. Actually it might be better to do it sooner than later. So I'm just going to put a drop of black in there. See how this goes. All right, it's a little better. Thanks. Thanks. So now I'm just shaping out. Pardon? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, that's wearable. Uh, that's. It can be wearable. It just needs to slid up the back, and then. Um, I had another one around here. Yeah, those are both wearable as well over there. Mm. So I'm just outlining this autopsy scar here, giving some uh, some more dimension to uh, the sculpture. Try to find little sores and wounds as I'm going. Hit those with some little accents. Hey, John, White Lion 44 thanks you for being here. Um, so say hi to White Lion 44. Uh, hello, White Lion 44. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, we're just uh, blasting through this zombie bust here. Hey, it's Chummy. John, little young Derek Rosengren yeah. is on his way. Nice. Is he coming? Yeah, he says he's on his way. Be there soon. Cool. A lot of love for Jerani Chirette. So yeah, more shaping, more shaping. I'm pretty much focusing on the deep spots and, and breaking out little islands of color at this point. Starting to look like a steak here on the side, so that's good. <laughs> this is the same red brown color that I uh, made a little bit ago. And I'm just using this to block out wounds and keep some uh, contrast going also. Right now, I'm actually, there's a dead spot of the sculpture. It's kind of bothering me a little bit, and it, it's not, like, transitioning well from the paint color all the way up to the top. So I'm just going to put some breakup spots and blobs to help move your eye about it. Just deep, you know, kind of hitting these little pock marks and wormholes or whatever. Nice. 
Nice, nice. So a little more of the same up in the nose here. Get some depth. I'm probably going to have to punch that almost nearly black eventually. But Same with back here in the mouth. So shaping, shaping. Here's when you get a chance to look at the sculpture and really see what either you do or don't like, and you can paint it out or embellish it. Um, not really. Um, as far as this, I did this uh, bust about, I would have to say about 12 years ago, maybe a little longer. Um, and I just... Sorry to interrupt, a question just came in about oh. this Cylon from White Lion. He's like, cool working Cylon. Yeah. We're going to take a little zombie mm -hmm. break for just two seconds. Will you tell them about this... Okay, uh, this Cylon's been a bit. <laughs> yeah, this Cylon's been a bit of a uh, pet project, if you would, uh, for me for the past two years. I uh, just always was fascinated with the character, and I really never knew how to do it uh, at the time. Like you know, when you're younger or a kid, and you know, it's like, how do you do chrome? You know, this and that. It's it's just really a complex um, thing to do. Like as far as what they really did was like vac metal, which is, you know, we won't get into that. This is really chrome plated. Um, I went above and beyond what, uh, what they did for the show uh, with this head. Uh, and I'm also building a complete suit. I'm recreating uh, one of the gold leaders from uh, Battlestar Galactica, Volpa, uh, in copper. Um, and it's the same thing. It'll be copper plated, real copper metal on the outside. Uh, so th this started from like a an interest, and then I just went on eBay and I tried to find and resource. You know, how can I get a helmet? And then it turned into how can I get a suit? And uh, I ended up buying like a cheapy version, and um, just being a you know kind of a stickler for detail. Uh, none of that floated; it wasn't good enough. So I ended up talking to some friends and was able to get a casting of an old. Uh, screen use Cylon helmet and take a mold off of it and then now completely cherry that out like it, it, it this thing looked horrible it was crushed it was cracked the face was shattered you know it was in uh, no means uh, showable you know so I restored the um, sculpture if you would uh, completely fixed it automotive style like uh, cherried it out to 2000 grit and that kind of began the process so once I did that, I was like, oh, maybe I want to make a whole Cylon. So now I've been recreating all of it. So like this gun, for instance, was um, sculpted out of a block of wood for the most part. I, I just kind of carved it out. And then I ended up tracking things down. Like these are actual castings from the movie or from the show. You know, so it's like you can find some of the stuff. But, you know, all this is recreated uh, to look like the hero gun. That's the other thing. There's a lot of discrepancies on which guns what, and because everything was handmade back then, and uh, like the hero gun had a bigger flash tube on it, so it couldn't quite uh, fit in the regular gun. So they had to make a modification. This this grip in the front was um, a, a mod they made just to accommodate the hero rifle, um, but you only saw it on that one. So it's it, it just became this interesting like uh, Indiana Jones kind of archaeological dig to find all this stuff um, but then yeah, I tracked down each and every component like I actually got one of those G&M camera battery belts that's what they use for the uh, Cylon belts they covered them with little chrome covers but th that company's long gone long uh, extinct for the most part and you can't find anything but remnants left over from them in 
it's they're non-functional and they need uh, attention anyway. So what I'm getting at is I took that information and I'm recreating that as well from scratch, from the ground up. Somebody else's product. I don't even know. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's just on the suit, so it's, I have to make it. You know, it was something they bought off the shelf, but now I had to make it. You know, I have some boots down here. Um, like these aren't anything real fancy here, but it's like they're actual Georgia boots, the same boots they used in the show, you know, so it's like, um, I just was sure to track down every little nook and cranny that, you know, make it exact, and like, the, you know, this, this piece still needs some work, it's not uh, as cherry as the rest of them, but, uh, um, yeah, it's a uh, labor of love, I'm just trying to make uh, the coolest Cylon, uh, maybe next year it'll be up. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's been something that kind of keeps me motivated. And in through the Cylon, I've done like other stuff from like the show, like as well. Like I did uh, Imperious Leader in the back over there, that purple guy, and um, th one of the Ovion Bug Bugman as well. Um, but it keeps me inspired. It's just a fun topic for me to stay interested, you know, with the with the subject matter. Hmm. Yeah. Nice, nice. Right on. Brother, nice. We are the beast. <laughs> He's right. We're the beast. Cool. Very cool. Cylon for sale, 2014. <laughs> on Instagram where, where they can get this bus. Can they get this bus? Yeah, they can get it, and get it through my Instagram. Get it through Johnny Cherevka because in Instagram, if you're Instagram followers and you're following us, get him at at John Cherevka. J-O-H-N-C-H-E-R-E-V-K-A at John Cherevka on Instagram. He's an artist. So yeah, I'm continuing to chop out some of these wounds here and block them out. I'm sorry? Uh, I'm not sure what that's in reference to. More than likely silicone, though. Uh. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Jamie Grove. Hey, what's happening, man? Good, 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 good. A little zombie time. We could do a different color. <laughs> <laughs> do the blue kind. 
<laughs> yeah, I think no two are the same anyway on these guys. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Thank you very much. Sorry, sorry, audience at home. We're uh, expanding a little this year. I know. We found the demos just uh, took over. And we had to have That's good. What's it, Jamie? How are you? How are you doing, brother? Mm -hmm. Good. Thanks, man. Uh, good friend of mine. Hey, John, you want to stroke Jamie a little? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Grove. Um, no, I'll tell you what. If, if there's any uh, anybody I want in the trenches with me, it's it's Jamie right here. Uh, we, we do some crazy stuff together in, in with some ridiculous deadlines. <laughs> I think if uh, we got the Guinness Book of World Record down there, I think we would have broken yeah. many of records on how fast we do this. Oh yeah. Um, hug in a little so we can hear you, Jamie. This is a good opportunity. And John, I'm gonna adjust your mic a little mm -hmm. bit. Sorry. Sure. So they can hear Jamie too. Talk to us about some of the highlights of your time in Creature Effects, some projects, creations you guys worked on together. Do you wanna reminisce a little bit? I think uh, I think the first one we worked on together was um, Iron Doom. Doom. Yeah, that's right. Doom. Yeah, that sounds right. And then uh, the, f the world. And I, yeah. I think War of the Worlds was the first one, huh? Doom. That was about the same time as yeah, Doom. They were all three of those movies kind of went in at the same time. Jeez. But uh, th those were uh, pretty incredible films. And, and that when we did the Martian uh, tripod, the crash tripod from War of the Worlds, it's like. <laughs> I think you thought I was a little crazy because I, I, I came up with uh, this paint stuff. We just pretty much just got this water-soluble paint it's called Acrobar, and we got metal powders and just cut them in that and walked around with Hudson sprayers, like, spraying <laughs> the ship, like, for... I mean, we probably made 40, you know, revolutions around this thing, like, every hour. Yeah, that thing um, was huge. That was fun going on set, too, to yeah. assemble all that and to see it. Um... Recently, we've done some pretty incredible work on Iron Man. Um, man, there's so much I keep forgetting about. It's just you work on so much, and it kind of. Oh, yeah. Pack Rim was another. Pacific uh, Rim, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, we were elbow to elbow in uh, that one. Snow White as well. Snow um, White was total gnarly. recall. There's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of monster suits last year. If you guys don't know who we're talking to, we've got two <laughs> Legacy Effects. I mean, if you're looking at the paint department at Legacy Effects, it is a, a sacred little space. And these two guys are there with, uh, now, Derek Rosengrant, and Trevor stays out. <laughs> this, is, this is Jamie Grove, this is John Cherevka. They are key painters, artists at Legacy Effects, and they've done pretty much every movie we're all fans of in the last 20 years, <laughs> I would say. So pay attention to what they have to say. They've worked on some really cool movies together in past these pieces. And talk about the robot for a second. Oh, yeah. The, the Before you talk about the robot, oh, we have yeah, a, of we course have a, always change it. Yes. We have a, a question from Death Becomes You, who was not here when you told us what this bust is made of. Uh, it is made of Ultra Cal 30 stone. Okay, now we can talk about the big robot. No, never mind. Big robot. Done. No, the, the zest is gone now. <laughs> I, I killed it. I killed rhythm. Well, people at home have a question. <laughs> well, 
I don't have many stories about the big robot. I, I, I came in and started on it, and then I went on set for a while, so oh, yeah. I, I, I missed a good portion of that. I did a lot of... What were you working on, James? Uh, a movie called Captain America 2. Are you allowed to tell us? Not too much. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, that robot was fun. Uh, a lot of detail elements in there that I worked on. Uh, mostly the uh, hands and face and head and um, bullets, the guns, stripes. <laughs> the ass, chest, face, and neck. <laughs> <laughs> we worked on a lot of that, actually. <laughs> So how's everything going with the uh, school? You guys got... It's doing great. Ask the how's everything going with Stan Winston School? How, how, how are you guys liking it? You guys liking the Stan Winston School? They, you need a little bit more Jamie, I understand that, but that we're, get, we're getting to that. <laughs> 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 and a little bit more John. Uh, you were talking about doing a live lesson. What, is the, uh, what, what do you have under your, your hat? I'm going to have to come up with something new now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't be a problem. I'll, uh, we'll do something fun, for sure, and gory. Hey, how long have you guys been in effects? The fans want to know. Jeez. Um, I've been doing it for about 15 years yeah, professionally. 17 years. <laughs> I've been out in L.A. for uh, 15 years. I worked back with Tom Savini uh, before that on a few projects. And ten of those years, I was with Stans and Legacy. Legacy. It's been about that long. Uh, you've been there, what? Yeah, thir thirteen 13? years at Legacy and Stans. Yeah, eight with Stan, the rest with Legacy. It's good times. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna uh, follow up from Juan Ochoa. Juan uh, wants to know what the arms and legs of the original Cylon suits were made out. Oh, that would be ABS. So, they can't hear me, so just restate the question. Um, the original Cylon suits were made of old-school ABS plastic. Um, that At that time, it only came in tan. It was only for bathrooms. <laughs> it was really uh, strange how that evolved into uh, vacuum forming, you know, but that's what it was about. Um, once vacuum forming came around, ABS just was very common. Um, you can... You can smell the same stuff in like the hardware store when you go like the black piping uh, the, next to the PVC. It's the, it's the same stuff. Um, you can buy it now, still like get it in any, any color at this point though. It used to just be like a tan. And that was it. <laughs> Did you let them know that all this stuff's for sale? <laughs> or follow you on Facebook and Instagram. Oh yeah, John Shrevka. <laughs> You know I, yeah, I make all this stuff. So it's like uh, these are kits and masks, and you know, the uh, s the sand person's a little harder just because it has machine bits out of it. But yeah, those fishmen are like model kits I sell, and I sell like you know monster masks or whatever. Right, James, oh, they're sweet. Uh, I'm at JSG Effects Jamie, or you could just have my name Jamie Grove. And then I'm out. I'm going to go check out the show. And Thanks, Good brother. to see you, my Thanks friend. Thanks for coming by. Thanks, brother. Bye, guys. Hey, Jamie, um, follow JSG FX. Dude, nice. Instagram. <laughs> Let's get you. What's it again? JSG FX Jamie. Follow one. Yeah. You put it at him. John, why did you decide to get into creature effects? Um, I was really fascinated with uh, stop motion animation originally. Um, that kind of was my uh, calling for it. I love just seeing like that things move around on the screen, like dinosaurs and whatnot. Uh, Godzilla, like I'm a huge fan of. Um, so yeah, th that kind of was the springboard. But then I immediately fell in love with uh, all the Universal monsters and. You know, Frankenstein and all that stuff is really dear to me. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, but yeah, I, I just 
I'm a huge monster fan, so it's like mostly what I watch. My movies are old 80s movies for the most part <laughs> that I scroll through. But uh, yeah, and I'm always on the lookout for some new cool monster flick, so it's just always been a fascination. Uh, the I would approach it almost if if you're getting into effects and uh, have a limited budget, uh, I would pursue almost the route that like Dick Smith kind of uh, went. Uh, he used a lot of stuff from uh, in the kitchen, in around the house, and from the supermarket. Um, you can uh, do a lot of like gelatin-oriented things that look like st still to this day incredibly real for burns and whatnot. Um, and some of the better uh, gel gelatin craftsmen. Um, can still make some amazing appliances out of that stuff. Uh, just a little more sensitive. Um, but there definitely is a, a ton of things. Uh, I, I remember a makeup artist once telling me that he ran out of uh, uh, me medical adhesive on set, and in a pinch he had to use honey. So, I mean, there's definitely uh, ways out there to, to create um, the solution that you kind of need. I think that's kind of the, the biggest part is, like, you have to be a a free-thinking person that can almost solve your own problems with what's at hand. So it's kind of like the same thing happens to us on these big-budget movies or on a small-budget movie or on a fast commercial. Like, you might be out of something and, like, oh, well, we can't get it. It won't, won't get here in time or um, the, the store's closed now. Like, what do we do? And you just ha figure out your options, you know, resource, and there might be another glue that works or another paint that'll work for this time or... Um, you know, just kind of resource is, is what, what we have to do for the most part. Hey, John, what kind of paints do you guys use on the Iron Man suits for the Iron Man films? The Iron Man suits are automotive paints. Uh, they're they're custom mixed. Uh, you know, you can't get that color, like, off the shelf. So that's a, a whole custom job. Um we have a, a vendor that we go back to uh, when we reorder that paint, and he has it almost set aside for us. Uh, but yeah, that's that's very very um, character oriented. So you're not going to find that off the shelf. Uh. Also, I have some hot oh, I have some hot here. I have some hot here. Yeah, I Indice Effects from Argentina uh, is loving this broadcast and is asking you what is the most difficult effects project you've ever had to work on? Most difficult effects project that I've ever had to work on. And this is for Indice uh, VFX. Indice VFX? Um, most difficult project, huh? Uh, I would have to say whenever it's it's a project that involves the character to be super, super clean or super, super, um, you know, like this you can get away with anything. I could drop it off the table and put it back up here and paint something and you'd never know it happened. Um, <laughs> but like there's, there's uh, circumstances where, uh, like on one of the Twilight movies, we, we had to make like a, a fake uh, body or whatever in that. That was really, really hard. I worked on that for probably three weeks, painting that thing in and out, flipping it over, in between the toes, in between the fingers. Um, and it just had to be fully believable. And it had to be fully believable up close, like, always. So if it was on its side or, you know, bent one way or whatever, it, it, every side needed to be perfect. Um, it's it, those kind of circumstances when uh, it becomes a more difficult project. Um, other than that, it's just time and or, you know, uh, you know, running out of it, you know, for the most part. Um, that's usually the battle we have, but as far as, like, just a solid, difficult project, I would think those, those movies um, were pretty hard. They just they had a, a cleanliness to the characters that you can't, um, almost a magical quality, so it was a little uh, harder. 
And then sometimes we get like commercials and whatnot. Where recently we had one um, where it was a, a bunch of super close up items, and um, dust looked like the, a chunk of bread like on the object. So it, like <laughs> we had to be so careful just to make sure they were thoroughly dusted. And when we painted them, we had to be hypercritical, like not to have any mess ups or you know like straight line is a straight line kind of thing. Um, so it, it really depends on the circumstance. Like that was all macro photography, and uh, it, it like everything showed up tenfold on that one. Um, so it really it is the circumstance. I think I'm uh, gonna move on to some maybe some airbrush marbling. Maybe I think is in order. I'm gonna make a black green color. And then uh, start to spray that on. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just made a mess. I just made a mess. I'm sorry, people at home. That was, that's John, you guys. I'm going to step in real quick. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, just for those of you who are joining us, we got new people joining us all the time. We are here live in Burbank, California at Son of Monster Palooza. This is one of the biggest Monster Maker events. Uh, Monster Palooza is later in the year and it's a time of year where all the greatest people in the effects industry get together, share their work, show their art, and we are joined today in the Stan Winston School booth by one of the very best artists in creature effects. This is John Cherevka. Uh, he is was a key artist. Uh, can you hear me now? He was a key artist at Stan Winston Studio for many years, and has been a key artist at Legacy Effects for the last five years. And he's truly one of the greats. He has a lesson on the Stan Winston School site on making creature eyes. Uh, so check that out. And today he is busting, uh, busting, painting a zombie bust uh, that he sculpted a few years back and he's going to take us through the process of turning this into a uh, a fully painted creature of the night. Um, please ask questions of John. This is, uh, as we said, live. What makes this special is you guys can ask this man anything you want to know about effects in real time and he will answer you. That's what he's here for, is to connect with you guys. So keep those questions coming and hang out with us all day. We're going to be broadcasting until 5. Uh, at two, we have Rick, Rick Lazzarini, another uh, Stan Winston Studio veteran who went on to found his own shop, uh, and he's a brilliant animatronics designer and a very funny man, and I uh, hope you can join us for that. So stick around all day, ask a lot of questions, and back to you, John. Thanks, Matt. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to do it because this is going to come up, I'm sure. Uh, what kind of airbrush do I use? Um, That's the one right there. And it's an Iwata. It says it right here. It's an HP TH. That means trigger handle. So you have this. That's your spray. And this right here is a built-in air regulator. So you can control uh, the flow of air through the airbrush in a fine tuning increment. So like what, what we use this for is like for spattering texture on or uh, for just tightening up. Um, you can go fine, but with a texture as well. Uh, so this airbrush, like I said, is the Iwata HPTH. It's from the custom series uh, at Iwata. And on the bottom, this is just a, a moisture trap. It's a, a little fatter, so it actually adds a little bit of a grip too um, for it, a little less hand fatigue. And uh, I also have a quick release hose down here that they all snap into. This is like. I have, this is what I have. I have one of these at home, I have one of these at work. Um, it's one of the best airbrushes out there, period. It's definitely not one of the cheapest out there. This is gonna, from a coast or a coast airbrush, you're looking at probably about $400. And if you're looking at one of these local art stores, it's gonna be like 525, something like that. This one's from Japan. Uh, I got it for um, 300 there. So it's, it all depends on uh, where you're looking. But uh, this is what I use. Um, so I'm going to just take some of this acrylic paint. I thinned out with a little bit of water. I got a, a black green kind of going on in there.
your greatest masterpiece? What is your proudest character you've worked on? Mm. And, uh, you can Nati- uh. Question come in from who was it from? Uh, sorry, bear with me. Voodoo Marie wants to know what your best masterpiece was. What What are you most proud of as an effects artist? Okay, um, as far as my, uh, the best masterpiece uh, that I may have worked on, um, I would have to say, from Avatar, uh, I did a fake head of uh, Sam Worthington that got fed into a, a, an oven, and it was a silicone head, uh, it was incredible, like, you could not tell it wasn't him just with his eyes closed right there. Um, I worked on that for a little while, probably two weeks on that head. Uh, it also, we did a set of fake legs, uh, the handicap legs from Avatar. Um, they were incredible as well. Uh, completely, completely real. I have a friend that has a, a similar uh, affliction with his legs in I was actually asked if I cast his legs, like for that. I was like, no, we we um we didn't, you know, it wasn't him that we cast, but it was a, uh, you know, more of a silicone fake fake legs, you know, that were just on the chair and uh, Sam's legs went through the chair, um, but that was really really incredible. Um, I think probably my favorite piece I've worked on. And then Natiri and Jake as well. They were really cool from that show. I, I painted on both of them. So I'm just going to come in with some black marbling to kind of break up this uh, little bit. Johnny, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you until 30 seconds from now. Okay, guys. uh, We have a question that came in from Archie Whitehead. Uh, Any tips for diffusing light in your work? Uh, Diffusing light in your work, say on an Iron Man suit. Uh, Yes. um, What was his screen name? Archie Whitehead. Archie Whitehead. uh, Archie. Archie Whitehead, the uh, tips for dis- diffusing um, light in a, with a light source, uh, that's what I, I believe you're talking about, like you have a light in a helmet or whatnot that is too bright or too stark, um, what we would do is uh, use layers of filters, and it could be anything, I, like I've done it myself in um, this like Imperious Leader guy right back here, now I can hear it. just with... Um, thin layer of paper towel and it, it can be a diffusion paper you can buy like special stuff from uh, like a lighting company um, or they actually sell a paint like a sign paint that that was the old way where you'd get like a clear sign you'd paint this white um, translucent milky sign paint on uh, the object and it, that'll diffuse it as well there's a, a bunch of tricks you can even try thinning out white paint and uh, spraying that onto the back or sandblasting or um, a paper even uh, I've used before so it there definitely is no rule to, to what you can use it's just what works for your your particular look that you're trying to develop like uh, in my Cylon eye over here th- there's two layers of the uh, fusion paper in that um, there's a a red gel and then there's also a like a I want to say it was it's one of those fancy papers so it had like a like a texture on one side and not on the other side I want to say it was like a snow or snow filter it's like a a lighting filter from a movie set or whatnot hey John what's the main brand of acrylics you like to use my favorite brand of acrylics are these right here. Um, 
model color uh, Vallejo paints. You can get these uh, some of the uh, local hardware stores, but for us, they're kind of rare. Uh, we have to jump on them when we get them. Uh, but they're really high quality pigments. Also, Reaper Minis makes a pigment, Reaper Paints. Um, those are also uh, very much the same. They're, they're really high end acrylics that you can um, thin out, airbrush, hand paint, and they're dead flat, which is another thing that I like about uh, their paints. Uh, John Necro Angel declares Necro Angel wants to know your uh, paint layering process. For example, do you start with your base color, then go into shadows, and then go with highlights? Is that your process, or um, do you mix it up? What I do is uh, base. I, I break it down as a as a visual what you're seeing. So, if the first biggest color would be the base color, so that that'll be like like this color right here this white whitish cream that is my base color the second layer I did a red mist uh, to start blocking out some of the the shapes and wounds that was with the airbrush um, then after that I do a, a dark wash in the cracks so that's all this going on in here um, that's with the oil paint that I use after that I'll actually take some naphtha while the oil paint's on there and I'll buff it off a little bit so it leaves behind just a little bit of like filth I guess <laughs> um, and then the next process would be getting into dry brushing and or washes it really depends on the character um, which route you're taking because uh, like a lot of organic stuff like this you m only because it's like a dirty guy would he get it, but like if it was a clean person, they wouldn't get all that washes and whatnot. David, thanks you for pointing out those paint brands. He says they can get them in Europe. Oh, He's fantastic. Excited. Uh, v Stop Yellow has two questions. We'll do the first one. The first one is, did sculpting and this sort of art come naturally to you, or did it only start to click after a lot of time? Um, so, yeah, sculpting did not come natural to me whatsoever. I, that sculpting was something I had to keep continuously work on um, and keep analyzing my forms and shapes, and even every, every sculpture I grow some on. So uh, I think that's one that you just have to do and do many of, you know, in order to, um, at least for me. Some guys just can throw down, so, you know, you never know. But painting was kind of always my thing. I always had, like, an eye for color and, uh, um, I don't know, like a, a way of layering them on that always seemed real and organic. Uh, Mike Manziel. Yeah. I, I don't know, like, M -A -N -Z -E -L. Sculpt sculpture's definitely Mike something Manziel. you have to work pretty hard at. Or at least I did, you know. Hey, John, V Stapiello also wants to know, do you watch the show Face Off? And if so, what do you think about it? I... V Stop, uh... I did watch the show Face Off. I did for oh, quite some time, and I kind of stopped because it, now it just seems a lot of the similar stuff over and over again, but... I don't know. I it's I've mixed feelings about it. Um, so like, I mean, sometimes it's like you would think it could be a, a a good break for somebody to get into the industry, but it's usually not what happens. It's like <laughs> it's what it seems like anyway. But I don't know. Mixed feelings. I'm, I'm and Juan Ochoa wants to know: Do you ever mess around with ZBrush? Uh. ZBrush was essential for us to know as key artists um, at stands. He was very, very critical on us picking up the newest technology and, and, and mastering it, not just knowing it. So ZBrush is something I do almost for fun now. Like, I don't do it at work. I, I do this kind of stuff at work. So I'm sure that if that's what I did at work, I'd be doing more of this sort of stuff just for fun. So, you know, <laughs> just the way it works out. You kind of... Um, 
it's good to be very well rounded and it's good to know both sides of it because if there's an issue anywhere along the pipeline you know we can kind of pinpoint that issue you know um, just the other day we had a problem with something and we ended up tracking it down to the machine it wasn't even like any person's fault but yet like the machine something happened to you know so um, yeah I think uh, it's good to know and, and I think it really helps with your uh, sculptural sculptural sense anyway with anatomy and uh, proportions um, to some degree it's really nice to have it in in person as well because there's some there's no undo for real you know so <laughs> you can't um, once you commit you commit you know like uh, that's the saving grace of ZBrush is they can a client can have a little more of a um, flexibility with what they're choosing and deciding where if you're going classic you know making a sculpture of a monster or a dinosaur you better like the way it's gonna look cuz that's the way it's gonna be <laughs> you know it's just like the design process has changed our way of approach slightly um, just because of the needs of the production for the most part lately to more of a computer aspect um, but we still do always sculptures for makeups and like monster gloves and all. I mean, there's some things you just can't get around, you know. Um, they'll, they'll need to be done traditionally. Uh, hey, Dar Dargor L Lorenz, uh, the giant mech suit that you would like to see. We didn't bring the amp suit, but we dr did bring the giant mech suit. Jake, can you pan over and show the crowd uh, our visitor? Uh, this robot you're seeing now was a collaboration between Wired, YouTube, Stan Winston School, and Legacy Effects to create the ultimate cosplay walk-around suit for Comic-Con. We brought it down there. John was actually uh, on the uh, team, did a lot of painting on this guy, and uh, we took Comic-Con by storm, and he's here at Son of Monster Palooza to remind people that building real things will never die. It's just too cool. And... Uh, we might get Bruce D. Mitchell to... <laughs> I doubt he'll get into it this weekend, but if you check out our YouTube channel, you can see tons of videos featuring the giant robot. Uh, Jeffrey Cruz wants to know, do you use Reynolds Smooth-On products? If so, like what? If not, what do you uh, prefer? I do use uh, a lot of Smooth-On products. Um, I like their, uh, their Mold Max, uh, that pink silicone. I think it's at the 50 or the 30. I use a lot of their casting resins. Um, I use their clear products. I like. I actually do like a lot of their products. They're very consistent. Um, we use their their psycho paint. Um, their tints for the silicone are fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm more than pleased with their products. S.T.E. Durkey wants to know, what's your favorite hobby? I have a feeling we're seeing your favorite hobby right yeah, here. Yeah, I think uh, mask making is probably it, you know. Um. Hey, Jake, while he's talking about mask making, would you slowly pan uh, across his uh, work that he's brought today so everyone can see it? Um, actually, John, as we go, we'll start here. You can see on the screen where... Oh, sorry. Johnny will... Johnny and Jake will both be on the same mask at the same time. Why don't we talk about them as we go through? You'll see them up there. Uh, this is an uh, Imperious Leader mask uh, that I did. Um, it's crazy accurate to the old show, Battlestar Galactica. It's missing its weird purple afro headdress thing that goes on there, but um, that was the Cylon leader for the most part. Um, that's what their race was before they became robots. Um, so a lot of things like echo from this design into the helmet as well. Uh, there's a lot of sim similarities um, with the, the width of the eyes and like the um, almost like the repetition of the lines under the mouth. They all they all echo through. But yeah, that that I did is a uh, from photographs, and then there was a point where I took photographs of it and then Photoshop lined up 
my sculpture with the real sculpture and then had to redo about 80% of it um, after that. Uh, so that was a uh, labor of love, but also to nail it, I, I really wanted it to be the imperious leader. So there, there's a lot of little subtleties that changed from like their actual sculpture that they did by the time it uh, hit this, the screen. Um, like the neck wasn't even the neck right there. Those little scales weren't even there. They, they added those as an after afterthought for the most part. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the eyes light up and whatnot. I, I probably made about eight of those last year just for, uh, just for fun. Um, but it's good stuff. keeps me busy. And then these guys over on the, on the left here, there's uh, this little fish men in the background. Those are some model kits that I make and sell. I'm a, I'm a big H.P. Lovecraft fan, and I love uh, all that uh, sea monsters and mutant fish monster men and it's just exciting to me and uh, above that is uh, one of my first kind of uh, match the photo masks exactly <laughs> so uh, I went like uh, painstakingly recreated all that from just photos um, and it's really really hyper accurate that's the the main Tuscan Raider that struck Luke down but yeah the, the Tuscan Raider has got a latex mask on the inside and metal parts and leather wrapped on the out outside um, and over here we have uh, that's the Ovion mask this uh, green bug guy uh, it's one of my newer ones um, from the show as well it's like they would collect the people from their bar and take them underground and I guess put a larva in there with them <laughs> um, I guess they were eating the people um, and then uh, the Cylon helmet of course uh, this this Cylon helmet is um, was kind of my first run it, uh, making sure the chrome was going to work uh, the way I wanted it. And if you look on there, I actually did the taping lines. You can see like right here in the center of the mouth and then like on the edge here, there's a little bit of lines going on here. Those are actually in only two of the original hero Cylons. That's like Flight Commander Serpentine and like the main um, main Cylon. But yeah. They were mylar. They were slits that they actually slit through the helmet and used uh, covered it with mylar. That's how they back then on that version saw. But uh, later on, they modified that to see. Um, they cut like little holes up in here in the shadows because they were always underlit. So that little area above the head here was always like a black shadow. Um, so they were able to put like what they called salt and pepper holes. Um, all through the the face of it. What is it made of? That's a resin. That that's a uh, fiberglass helmet, um, chrome plated. Thanks. John, I don't know if you've uh, answered this already. Joe wants to know, do you use additive printing in any way? I don't know if you've answered this already. Joe would like to know if you use additive printing in any way. Additive? Like 3D printing. Uh, I personally don't use the printing at home, but we use it at work like on a regular basis. But um, it's just not practical for me to do it out of my house right at this point. But um, I'm still prone to just going and grabbing a block of clay. It's a little easier for me than, than you know, walking around the printing issue, you know. <laughs> but uh, we do use it. And uh, I, 
I have some projects I've done in ZBrush that I would like to have printed, but um, it's just not as much common, or not as common for me on a uh, daily basis anyway. You know. John and Voodoo Mari wants to know how long do you spend on each mask? Um, as far as the sculpture or it, like the whole process? The whole process. Uh, each mask usually takes me um, to make the first one. It's usually about two months. Like I'll, I'll start on the sculpture and I don't like do it like every day. So it's like it'll be in the garage. I'll work on a couple hours here and there. Um, I think on like that Obion mask over there, that was probably like a. 12 hour sculpt maybe and it wasn't like all that you know yeah. where this guy might have been <coughs> 40 hours or something like that it's a little smaller and then the, the paint job was like two hours on that so it, it's not it's not all that extensive um, some of them like the uh, imperious leader is a little um, it's not even that hard of a paint job which is a little more complicated so it, that might take like three four hours Everybody. Hey, hi. Hi. Uh, Jake, would you pan around the room as we tell people where we are? I'm Matt Winston, co-founder of Stan Winston School. We're here with John Cherevka in the Stan Winston School booth at Son of Monster Palooza. And this is a mecca for monster makers. It comes but twice a year. We have Monster Palooza uh, in the spring, and we have Son of Monster Palooza in the fall. And it's the coolest place in the world if you love creature effects. Everyone's here. Uh, and we are joined by John Cherevka, one of the finest artists in Hollywood. Here, can you zoom in on this? Son of Monster Palooza. If you've never been to one, come to LA and, and join us. So much fun. Uh, for those of you who are watching, this is all about interaction. Keep your questions coming for John. He's been in the business 15 years, 17 years, yeah. 17 years. He has worked on some of the most massive projects that ever came out of Stan Winston's studio. He's created dinosaurs and Terminators and Iron Men and Robocop and a zillion other things. And so uh, this is an awesome opportunity for you guys to talk to John. Also, if you're watching, please share the link to this broadcast with your friends on your social media channels. Uh, you can see just under the player that you're watching, you'll see a share button. Click on that, you'll see a link. Copy it and paste it, put it on your Facebook page. If you do this, uh, we are going to, at the end of the broadcast, send those of you who help us spread the word about this a coupon code for your next tutorial purchase. So if you give a shout out on your social media channel, let us know in the comments, say I shouted it out. Uh, and give it and include your email address in the comments and we will make sure to send you oh YouTube won't allow you to put your email address so instead hashtag it on Facebook even better 
if you have shared with your friends about this broadcast, private message us on our Facebook page and you can leave your email for us right there. And we'll uh, get you a coupon code at the end of the day. All right, guys. Enjoy John. Ask questions. So I'm still working with some of this modeling. This is the, one of the longer, longer parts here. John, Crazy Viper would like to know, is there one mask, uh, you, you, one mask you like doing more than the others? Um, not necessarily. I, I think they're, they all, like, at least the ones I come up with on my own, they're kind of dear to me. So most of the sculptures and masks that, you know, like these guys in the background, like that's just stuff I'm a fan of. So I would have done it if no one bought any. So, you know, <laughs> but um. There, there are times when you make custom masks for other people that are, um, you know, maybe not like more of a commission work. So that's a different story, you know. But uh, that, that's more of a job. But these are, you know, just because I love it. So it's good. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Lost a few. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Cool, man. Take it easy, Kevin.
So John uh, R2 Thicor wants to know, when you're laying out veins, how do you know when to stop? Or what, what's your thought process? Uh, wh when I'm marbling out, um, I, I am, I'm just imagining that you're talking about uh, the marbling I'm doing right now. Um, how do you know when to stop as far as like when's too many or when's enough? I'm looking for like an asymmetrical kind of balance to this thing. so I'm. I'm gonna try to bold up a little bit more of this, but I want like negative spat patches as well, where where there's not um, where there's not as strong a uh, model, you know. So it's kind of like just to eye for the most part. Some of it's to feel. Like it look, may look fine from the one way, and then you turn it another way, and then like you might see something you, you want to add or change or you know uh, play with up here. Um, it's mostly to taste in. You got to look at some forensic books to, you know, <laughs> and just know where you're at, you know, as far as uh, how far to go, you know. Hyper. And Crazy Viper would like to know, are there any commissions that stand out? Are there um, any commissions that stand out? Um, yeah, not that long ago, um, on the same lines of this Cylon, I did a, a, a Baltar helmet, which was uh, the John Cochleus character from uh, Battlestar Galactica. And uh, that was a gold-plated helmet. Uh, I got it 24-karat gold-plated. It was amazing. Like, And it, it turned out like... Better than I could have imagined. So I, I, I was so happy with that. I actually didn't want to give it away. I was like, oh no, <laughs> you know, it was, this guy paid for that, but um, it was beautiful, like beautiful helmet. This? Do 
Hey guys, this is the voice of Matt Winston you're hearing. Go ahead and ask John questions about art. This is an amazing opportunity for you guys to learn from him. Right now he's airbrushing a bust, a zombie bust uh, of his own creation. It's been cast up in UltraCal uh, so that it lasts and he is applying a gorgeous, disgusting finish to it using techniques he uses on Hollywood blockbusters every day. Now I'm doing what's called like sinking the model down inside the skin. So basically you have like a squiggle that we start with like this for instance up here. That's what I would call like a mapped out model. Now I want to sink this down in there and make it look like it's deeper, you know, in like a thinner translucent skin. So basically with your airbrush what you do is like you're modeling up close, like probably like a half inch away. I'm going to pull back widen out to probably closer to two inches and just lightly miss the same color but it's so feathered that it's hard to tell its origin so what it's doing is sinking it down in there it's like making it look like it's dropping deeper hey John Giorts this guy's name is Giorts. I hope I'm pronouncing your name. Is it Giorts or Giorts? Mm -hmm. Is asking, do you work with other designers as well? Or is it up to you, the look? How much freedom do you have during the process? Or are there concepts you have to fulfill? Um, at work, uh, we need to match the approved artwork that comes down from above. So if they gave me a head that needed to match like a whatever a new robot that needed to be out um, that would be very very critical completely based on only the final approved design um, sometimes you, there's like design you know some approved renderings just before and they may um, look like the final but there may be subtleties that are different and we really need the final to commit because we have to order the paint and whatnot so it's like that, that just really helps us to start. But if it's something like out of the blue, like where we just can, like this character, I can just make him however I want him to be. Um, it's a little of both. So it's like if it's for a client, it's usually exactly what they wanted, you need to give them. Um, and that goes, if they put a little blue lighting in there just to sell the design, you might need to put a little blue lighting on the guy, you know, like either with either color or shoot it in a blue light you know to, to sell it as well but um sometimes you get like complete artistic freedom and you get to roll with it the whole way through but that, that's not so common it's usually just for the client whatever that may be Hey, we have a question here for from Dar Darger uh, Lorenz. Darger asks, I'm trying to make a leather face mask. What type of latex and method might you recommend? Uh, I know for a fact the first version of Texas Chainsaw and the second one, that was just latex in those masks. Um, Tom Savini used just brush up latex when he made the second one and the first one was just that, it was just latex. Um, so the new ones, like the one uh, I think Scott Stoddard did was, um, that was, I believe it was silicone, but it, it may have been latex as well. Um, but uh, I think even the third one was uh, latex only. Um, so yeah, most often they're just latex. I, you know why? 
it's because the, the way latex feels is very close to leather. It's very similar. Um, and the transition uh, is, is very um, short. Like if you were trying to simulate the paint job on two things and you had them both moving on a face, it's the only time it would matter uh, what it was made out of um, is if it's moving. Um, but yeah, latex definitely on the first two. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface Faces. Uh, John, this is not a question, but a statement from Necro Angel. Necro Angel says, when I was in school, I watched T2, and it just blew my mind. I got Fangoria to watch the pictures to replicate the effects. It was hard to get material of any kind. What we are looking at now is priceless. <laughs> He's loving what you're right doing. Right on, right on. That's from Necro Thank Angel. You. Uh, we have a question here from Juan that I will answer. Uh, this is Matt Winston. Hey, Juan. You ask, does uh, SW, well now Legacy Effects, get to do the design part sometimes, or does the artwork come from the production's in-house art department? It's both. Sometimes yes. a production will come uh, with art that they've worked on and bring it to the studio to flesh out and develop. And sometimes they'll just come with a script, with a character description, and say, go to town, guys. Uh, so it can go both ways. Hey, how's it going? Sam2753 says, I'm a digital VFX artist and 3D modeler. How much are you seeing 3D creature sculpting replacing the hands-on work that you're doing on this character? <clears throat> Uh, the 3D uh, creature modeling definitely does um, replace some, but it doesn't replace all. Um, they have yet to find a way to do that with a person inside, you know, like, uh, in, like if you were doing an organic monster suit. I mean, uh, I've yet to see that one uh, where they just made a monster and a guy fits in the suit um, without doing it in clay. Um, Usually we like the control of the thickness of material. That's kind of like the, um, the reason we would sculpt a bodysuit uh, in the first place because, you know, like arms move a certain way and you need to like compensate for all, all that way that um, is. And it's like the pleats need to be a certain way. Uh, like when, when you're cutting and rolling the muscles, especially like when, if the character has to lift, lift his arms up, the sculpture will change, but the muscles don't change. So you need to... Um, almost have a little knowledge in making bodysuits um, to get really good at that little bit of, of stuff. But I don't know if it's going to ever completely replace, but it definitely, we work hand in hand. There's times where we have to print some and sculpt some. So, I don't know. It's just another medium for us. And John, for those who don't know, what is this piece for? Is it a display piece or is it for a project? Bring everyone up to speed on how uh, this came apart. This came zombie apart. is um, just a uh, display piece for the most part. It was a, a, a sculpture that I did years ago. And I um, just I had the mold sitting around and I, I kind of was like, hey, I, I should really have one of those out. You know, like, it's, n it's no fun to look at the outside of a mold for years, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, like... Usually when I finish these, they, you know, they end up going away or somebody wants it or whatever, but, um, and I end up left with hardly anything half the time, so I have to keep, uh, keep making stuff just to have, have these guys around a little bit. And Donnie J just showed up and wants to know what brand of paints you're using. I know you mentioned it earlier, but... Yeah, on this particular guy, I'm using these, um... Vallejo uh, model colors. Um, they're very uh, good acrylics. They're they're densely pigmented. You can use Reaper Minis. There's like there's a few that are about that size and scale and density of uh, pigment that would be just fine. 
Um, that's what I'm after mostly. Like when I want to hand paint black, I want it to be one time. You know, uh, if I want to airbrush a translucent glaze, I want that to be exactly what it is. So out of these paints, you can get all that uh, out of, and it's just water. You know, you don't need uh, alcohol or anything else. Hey, uh, John Juan Ochoa wants to know, do you have a special paint approach to allow subsurface scatter effects uh, from the material to come through? On silicone, yes. That's the, uh, we, we follow the theory of less is more uh, on silicone. So that means the skin itself needs to match almost exactly just to begin. So um, you hear when you make your... Uh, your silicone casting, it should be very near where you need to be. Um, that way, the less paint you put on there, it makes it way more hyper-realistic, uh, and you get a much better result. It allows the light to penetrate better through it. All right, I think I'm ready to move on to another flavor here. Uh, v. Stapiello says, the work you guys do is just as good as the old masters, uh, Michelangelo, etc. <laughs> the amount of talent and hard work astounds me. Don't think CGI will ever replace what you guys do. Yeah. Here, here, V. Stapiello. <laughs> you said it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm on the same page with that. I, I, I don't know if um can fully be replaced, really. You know. All right, I think it's time to get it, get into these eyes a little bit here. Um, all right, I'm going to go unorthodox with the eyes. I just tired of the same thing, so I'm going to do something new. Darjor says, love the art you're doing here. Keep it up. Without you, effects wouldn't be the same. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go real contrasty with his eyes. So I think I'm going to try something, some like orange and blue maybe. Um, I know, I just want to get all up in John's face, man. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hi, how you doing? I'm Good, good. Nice to meet you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I love him. Scary guys. I like him. Hey, Jeffrey Cruz, thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. And Mario Clemente asks, I want to work uh, in Stan Winston. What requirements are needed? I believe you're saying you want to work in Creature Effects, Mario. The key uh, to any cool profession is to be passionate and devote yourself to being the best you can be. All the artists who work in creature effects have devoted their lives to getting really good at art. And that's what you need to be doing. You need to be sculpting and painting and, and doing this, designing every single day. And then take photographs of your best work uh, because people aren't going to ask to see a degree when it comes time to find a job. They're going to ask to see your work. So just be as good as you can be and get your work out there. That's the best advice I can give you. Uh, Jai Ortz says, what's the difference between your work and someone who is being brought on as, a, as the original concept designer? Um, uh, is it another profession as a whole? Or do people go back and forth? Um, 
at our work, it's very it's sort of segregated as far as the designers and artists. Um, it, I think just for the uh, to, to keep a turnout going uh, for the most part. Um, so yeah, it is a kind of a different job uh, where some of the key artists do do concept designs, but not very often do concept designers do key artist work. Uh, that only happens once in a while. Uh, there are some guys that can do it, but not many. Um, yeah, it's a it's a more of a different kind of a field or a occupation in the same roof, anyway. Uh, but we do work hand in hand, and we definitely. Um, they they want to make sure they get their message across, and we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So there's definitely uh, communication between us. Necro says, man, look at the expression of this zombie. Wow. Darger Lorenz says, wanted to say thank you to, uh, to you, John, and all the artists that dedicate yourselves to this. He's a huge fan of Jurassic Park and wouldn't love it as, love it as much as he does if it was all CGI. <laughs> right on. Thank you. Uh, Sean Patrick Watkins wants to know, for non-display items that are going to move, do you need to worry about cracking or peeling, or is that not an issue with airbrushing? Um, the paints that I use on uh, the, uh, the latex masks, those are uh, flexible paints, so that, that's rubber cement based. Um, the other, this paint on here is just acrylic. So um, on this surface, it's just fine, but it would not be fine on on a latex mask. It probably would crack or peel, like you mentioned. Um, but on this surface, it's it's pretty solid. Uh, sometimes I'll use like enamels and lacquers, uh, but most of the time it's it's a it's acrylics. Crazy Viper, I'm glad you're enjoying this live video. We're doing many more like this. In fact, we'll be broadcasting all day until 5 a.m. Pacific time, and we'll be broadcasting live again tomorrow, Sunday, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. We've got Steve Johnson uh, in the morning for three hours, uh, effects icon. He's going to be doing an awesome application. And then we're going to do a series of interviews with a bunch of artists from Monster Palooza for the second half of the day. So I hope you can all join us again tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You'll find the link to the broadcast on our Facebook page tomorrow, so check it out. Uh, John, 
Dave V. E. asks, uh, when painting or working on a sculpt that will have animatronics underneath, are there any special considerations you need to keep in mind? You need to, uh, when you're working on a sculpture that needs uh, animatronics, you need to definitely keep in mind um, your limitations. Now, if, if you're if it's if your eyes say you want me mechanical eyes in there and it's too close to the actor's face, that's going to be a big problem. Um, so that's something that take into consideration. Like like Pumpkinhead, his face was like further away from the actor's face. So the actor's head was actually in the neck with the head on top like a hat, and that whole head was able to be stuffed with animatronics. So in that si uh, situation, um, there was plenty of space. But we've been in other situations like on um, Dr. Moreau where there's some faces that are so thin and they have moving stuff um, that that causes uh, a whole Welcome to Monster Blues. <laughs> we love you, Mama Brodsky. We love you, Mama Brodsky. The voice of monster making. Oh, yes. Are you ready to be frightened yeah, yeah. here? <laughs> you should try the matzo ball soup. It's delicious. <laughs> Hey, John, Tetraval Biosecurity uh, wants to know, he says, earlier you mentioned that you really love designing HP Lovecraft monsters and creatures in general, but are there any robots or cyborgs you've worked on that have given you that same feeling? Um, robots that give me the same feeling as a, some Lovecraft stuff. Uh, I think... Hmm. I'll have to probably say no, and I'll tell you why. Um, there's an organic quality to Lovecraft stuff that I think that's what attracts me to it. It's like this weird, like, you know, if you just think of like a pile of octopus tentacles or some something like that, it's like, it's hard to tell what's going on there. It's like, it's very organic, very translucent. Um, it's just a little different. Uh, I do like robots, don't get me wrong, like, um, but just not on that same level. Uh, hi there, uh, Farmit2411 from Malaysia says it's almost 4 a.m. in Malaysia and you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> Thank you. The Don 8 came late and wants to know uh, what kind of material you like to sculpt in most? Uh, uh, my, my favorite uh, clay to sculpt in is um, P40, Chavant P40. It's, uh, it's not so easy to get anymore. They're, I think they're discontinuing it, of course. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to find something comparable as well. But uh, I like it because it, it has like a, it's good for miniatures because it has like a, a crumbly quality that is good with miniatures. Like I can't uh, really explain it. It's, the texture is really um, great for doing skin in a miniature form. Um, that's why I like it. And it's alcohol soluble and a little bit of uh, naphtha you know, is all you need to melt that stuff down as far as uh, to smooth it out or spread it out. Lynn Petty wants to know, when building a silicone mold on a sculpture, a wet clay sculpture, uh, should the clay be sealed first? Building a silicone mold on a wet clay, yeah, crystal clear.
Is that spelled with a K? How do they do crystal clear? C. It's a C? Yeah. All right. I think we're going to go over. Did you set a timeout on it? You didn't set a timeout on it. We'll go 10 minutes over. Okay. So, hey, guys, we're going to continue broadcasting with John for another... It's, uh, it's only two minutes to one, but how do you feel about going another 10, John? we we'll go another 10. Okay, great. We'll go 10 more minutes with John. And then we hope you stick around. We're going to introduce you to our next uh, effects genius. That's Rick Lazzarini, who's standing in the wings. Uh, he's going to come in and do a, uh, an animatronics demo with you guys. Talk to you about the other side of things. The mechanical aspect of creating creatures. So please stick around. Hey, John, do you sometimes feel like an elf in Santa's workshop? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do sometimes feel like an elf in Santa's workshop. Um, <laughs> I was just talking about that yesterday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> hey, John, was this particular bust featured in AFM, Advanced Figure Modeler? Yes, was well, it was. Monkeys Must Die 777 says the original release was reviewed with great photos in an older issue of AFM. He's seen it. That's very cool. Yeah, it's a long time ago. I, I can't remember when, when that came out, but it, I'm sure that was a few years after I did it. Um, hey, Monkeys Must Die 77, if you know the date of that issue, please remind John. I'd love to see it. What's up, Rick? Good, good. How you been? We want to know about your Zombot. Monkeys Must Die 777 says, ask John about his Zombot. Zombot? Zombot? Can you clarify, please? <laughs> uh... Sean Patrick Watkins threatens to knock on my door soon because I told him that's how you get an effects job. <laughs> Come to L.A. and knock on doors. Well, look forward to seeing you, Sean. I might, I might not answer, though. <laughs> <laughs> Depends if your work's awesome and if you're nice. Uh, okay, Domatron Graves, New Orleans artist here, looking to break into the SFX industry. The new industry seems to import most of their artists from the West Coast. Do you think there's room for growth in the industry? Well, uh, L.A. will always be the center of creature effects. I can answer that for you. Um, but there's a lot of independent film production going on uh, all around the country. And if you're a local artist, you, you, you have opportunities now that you didn't have before. Necro Angel says, knock, knock, knocking on Stan Winston's door. Hilarious. <laughs> Hey, uh, Creation X wants to know how you base this guy out. House paint. I, I base this guy out just with house paint, uh, one solid color, and then I went back with some reds and started to block in the the, uh, the big areas with the airbrush. Um, and then later, I, I this was house paint as well down here, the yellow. Uh, but then it, it switched to these artist Vallejos for the most part of it, um, model colors. It's acrylic for... It's just a little safer for in here, for sure. Um, but, yeah, we use all of it. Hey, John, that 70 yeah. space says, this is great, thank you. All right I'm on. a freelance 3D modeler, animator. I'm actually 3D modeling on a freelance pilot as I watch you. You want to trade places? <laughs> I mean, I want to trade places. <laughs> he wants to be doing what you're doing. And Troy Piku says, do you sketch your designs first when you do a, a bust? Uh, I, I, I do do a thumbnail usually sketch, um, or I'll do a Photoshop study if it's going to be very involved and uh, be too weird. Um, cause 
I have a sculpture I'm working on at home that's kind of a pretty strange and it, it required some uh, some pre artwork to envision it before I got started but sometimes it's necessary sometimes it's not and Sean Patrick Watkins wants to know do you use any type of protective spray coats on top of the acrylic uh, for your display work or does the acrylic hold up well on its own uh, the acrylic will hold up well on its own I don't seal it uh, usually because it changes my finishes it unifies all the finish um, I use a lot of flat and gloss back and forth and I like that to uh, to echo through to the final so um, I would not just put a, a final sealer as a unless it was supposed to just be just flat or just glossy um, but if it needed to be like organic or human like uh, then it would need either to be sealed early on or not to seal it. And John, another question about painting. What do you use for a gloss coat? Um, Non-yellowing or for uh, a gloss coat, testers you, you or you can use a ton of stuff. Um, I really have no favorite. I just have what I use all the time, and it's most often is an automotive clear coat, catalyzed, and that I, you can brush on to eyes and teeth and whatnot. Um, sometimes I'll use like stuff like this um, in a in a gloss version. This is a matte gel, but j they have a gloss medium uh, acrylic. They have um, Poly S makes a fantastic gloss. Um, it's like in a little bottle like this it's like a it's called like poly s um but they, th that's pretty good but if you want it to really really be glossy i use automotive gloss i mean you can get away with five minute epoxy or something like that but that's going to yellow hey how do you clean and maintain your display pieces john um if it's just dust then just light soap and water to keep uh, them clean but uh that's usually all you need um, really the best thing is just not to let them get too bad you know and then it's not such a big big ordeal Kara Becker 45 says live long and prosper <laughs> prosper master <laughs> And Creation X says, you rock. I know. <laughs> and Osis Carr says, hey, hey, a guy from Latvia here. He's in Latvia. He says, I'm stu studying special effects and model effects at the University of Hertfordshire in UK. I am making props more than sculptures, but this is amazing. Thank you. Uh, the theme park says amazing work from one of your biggest fans in Ireland. Make sure to follow John on Instagram. John Cherevka on Instagram. Drexis Prime Time says this is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Very welcome. It's about time to wrap this up and have some beers, man. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> All right, you're right. It is time to wrap it up. Um, Jake, you on camera? Yeah, some, some. Uh, hey guys, so John, face this camera. We're gonna we're gonna say goodbye. We're gonna introduce Rick. You've all been with us here at Son of Monster Palooza, watching the great John Cherevka do his artwork on a zombie bust of his own creation. Uh, we hope you guys learned a lot. Uh, this man is one of the true geniuses of the craft, and you can. Check him out on. Do you have a public Facebook page or is it? I private? do have a public Facebook page. You want to yeah. give a shout yeah, out? It's to just some just my name, John Cherevka, J O H N C H E R E V K A. And you can see that on the lower thirds on your screen right now. Uh, search him on Facebook, friend him, follow his artwork. Do you have any other uh, like Twitter, Instagram? In Instagram, same thing. One one word at John Cherevka uh, on Instagram.
So please follow John, follow his work, check out his tutorial on the Stan Winston School site, Making Creature Eyes. You're going to learn the techniques that have made this man one of the best in the business. And we are going to be going right into another demonstration soon. Do we have Rick Lazzarini nearby? Rick, come on in. Come on in. Um, I'm not going to kick you out yet, John. Yeah. Hang out, hang out. Um, uh, we are going. Right. We're going to let been? John clean up his stuff uh, and you. finish up. But we're going to go right into another three-hour live broadcast with this gentleman right here, Rick Lazzarini. Uh, Rick Lazzarini is uh, one of the great mechanical effects designers. He runs uh, the character shop, uh, and he worked with Dad for, for years. He worked on Aliens. This man is responsible for some of the greatest movie, movie magic you've seen. He's going to be doing a cool uh, animatronics overview demo with us starting at 2 o'clock, so in 40 minutes. We'll be posting the link to that broadcast on our Facebook page. So we're going we're gonna to turn this broadcast off, and we'll be back in 40 minutes. Go to the Stan Winston School Facebook page for information on where to find the live broadcast, and we'll be watching this guy. Yeah. Say hey, say hey, Rick. Tell me, is that us? It's just me. I, I always uh, cause static. All right, they can hear you just fine. Say hi. Excellent. Hey, everybody. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be looking at animatronics from uh, the beginnings and the basics, and we're going to go into some more sophisticated stuff. Stick around. See ya. Stay tuned. Don't change that channel. Alright, we're going to end the broadcast now, guys. We'll see you in about 40 minutes.